What is going down, everybody? Welcome to the All Seas Collector's Edition podcast. My name is James. I'm your host, followed by my co-host, Trish. I'm not a hoe. I'm co-host. <laughs> co-host. Trish. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Chris the Beard Packo. Ahoy, ahoy. My DM, AJ. I'll be your co-host. <laughs> co <Hello. laughs> Leave the hoe to me. And we're always kid behind the camera. Hey. Thank you, kid. And our very special guest this week, Mr. Martin Clement. Thank you, sir. Hi, guys. How are you? Oh, uh, thank God. I, I can hear you throughout, but I don't know if I, I feel here better if I put my speakers on or my, my headsets on. Yeah, right? I'm having a hard time with mine right now. I don't like the headsets. There you go. <laughs> I have the stupid beats I never use, so I might as well use it for this, eh? Right? No doubt. There you go. Well, my friend, thank you for joining us for the second time. No, how's, no been problem. The, how's the lockdown been? Uh... <sighs> I'm yeah. still married and I'm still a dad. Right. So I haven't killed either one of them. And we're good. <laughs> that is a plus. Fair enough. Fair enough. Or they, haven't, or they haven't killed me, I should say. Yeah, or vice versa. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's just get into our collectible podcast here. And the market's there for, for people liking and sharing and watching this podcast. We like to give you stuff. And this month, we're going to give you an Emmanuel Sanders signed 16 by 20 frame photo. JSA certified. We brought, it's a really big piece. We brought it out last week. Check out last week's podcast. Yeah, if you want really, to it's it. huge. It's huge. Sweet piece. Check that bad Ooh. boy out. We're going to give that away to – what do they have to do to win that thing? All right. So Who's Emmanuel Sanders? Emmanuel Sanders, Broncos Is that legend. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, Webster, right? <laughs> we are going to be giving away this piece. You guys need to like, comment, and share on Facebook. Like and share over on Twitter, YouTube. Podbean, Apple iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and of course, iHeartRadio. Absolutely. And now on Twitter. On Twitch. Even though we're not, or Twitch. Twitch. Even Twitch. though we're not live on Twitch right now. YouTube, right? Twitch, all that jazz. Yeah. Something like 13 chances a week you have to win our week, our monthly giveaway. So, chance this week to go in and win that Emmanuel Sanders signed picture. Yep. And please tell a friend about collectibles and get them into collecting. That's why we do this thing. All, all right. right. For that, we have a cool Facebook group. It's called Beyond the Long Box. We ask everybody to join that. We do box breaks in there for sports cards, gaming, share your collection with people, trade. Uh, Eddie, Eddie kind of finished his garbage belt get set this week uh, by trading with another collector, Ivan, in the Beyond the Long Box group. So very cool network and community of collectors. I encourage everybody to go join that bad boy. There we go. We we a, I love Colorado moose. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. I think I got right. that. Uh, I got the uh, some autograph. So, from uh, where was it? it? Was outside. It wasn't Estes the big Park. number one. What was it? That's the Park. Park. Yeah. The one that owns you. That's the Park. That you. What? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, yeah, they didn't pay people. Mm. Oh, they got there. They. I think that was an insurance thing, wasn't it? I think it was Estes Park Comic Con. I can't believe they even had that. Yeah. yeah, I'm really surprised that comic like that's just part of Comic Con as well. Like, where would they even hold that? What event center? They don't have. The only event I know of that happens in Estes Park is a giant like Scottish dance festival, which you can do because they have open fields. But there's yeah, no giant right. event center. Right. Well, was just an elk. The elk come down. They party. Yep. It, well, you can party with the elk. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the yeah. dance festival's about. It actually wasn't a bad. The the place that they had it wasn't bad. It was just crickets. Yeah, no, you did, right? Yeah, and they had a nice little downtown. and. Oh, it's it a like, beautiful, yeah. beautiful park. Yeah. Right? But nobody, nobody goes to Estes Park. park. Nobody goes to Estes Park to stay indoors. No. Unless you're going and to stay. Like one of those old slides you go down in in a beanbag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little park. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into this marketplace. We'll get into our interview with Martin. I'm ready to. Talk to Marty and get me to it. So let's just get through this quickly. Yep. Gold, $1,828. Yeah. Silver, $24.79. The Dow down. Yep, Dow down about 300 points. And we talked Bitcoin last month, and it's down almost $4,000. Yeah. Bitcoin taking a big, big lot there. Yep. 
Get my gold and silver. It's not Bitcoin. All right, Chris, let's just do this comic breakdown. Picks from the beard. Tell us what new comic books are this week's hot picks. Is this like a reverse pregnancy or something? <laughs> What's going on here? Thumb wrestler. Thumb wrestler. Uh -huh. That's the vibes of the week. Hold on. Ah, shit. We're going to throw down here. Oh. A little, a little thumb wrestle going down. We're going down. down. <laughs> oh, All right, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> Get on top. Get on top. You know you like on top. There you go. Dark detective. This is Bruce Wayne, not Batman, being like a detective behind the scenes. Who is that? Dark Wayne? Yeah, it's the second Batman book. I almost movie. sold this as Wonder Woman to Solomon. I thought it was Wonder Woman. Yeah, <laughs> it's the Wonder Woman 84 cover for the movie that came out. It goes to you have to read a comic book, not judge it by its cover. This is very true. Is that a thousand dollars yet in the in the box office? I, was I, I haven't heard the numbers. I know it's kind of I made like two to three million last week or something like that worldwide. Yeah, it's like a hundred. I think a hundred million worldwide, but that's you got China's market. So yeah. yeah. This one I'm excited about, Chris. All right, next up we got the King in Black from Marvel. We got Gwynnum versus Carnage. And I got this cover for Anthony because he loves Gwenum. Gwenum's cool. This is Gwenum versus Carnage. There's a new Carnage who's made in this issue. It's Mary Jane Watson. Yep, so Mary Jane getting them tiger. Mary yep. Jane, no. Yep. And then keeping with the King in Black theme, we've got Planet of Symbiotes. I love this cover. Great art. There's a lot going on, a lot of weird symbiotes on this cover. Good work. I like and is that. this on the planet Spartax that we talked about last time? I don't know. I think it might be. I think this is picked up on the planet that he killed, if I remember right. It's, this is supposed to be a three-book miniseries. Yes. Cool. I'm excited about this next one, too. Yeah, yeah this next one looks cool. This is from their creator team of uh, Ice Cream Math. Image Comics. Image Comics. Image Comics. Pop the ice cream man Stop guy. I'm not sure why, but yeah, got creepy on the right. cover. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's good. Ice cream man's good. Really, really good read. Nice. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of cult followings. Yeah, I am looking forward to reading this. Guaranteed. Agent, what's that for gaming this week? Anything? Gaming was pretty dead this week. Big news is coming next week. Is the official release of the brand new Digimon card game. We already oh had a release event back in November, but the actual set is going to release next weekend, and it's hot. I've got people calling all week about it. I have a feeling we're going to sell out that first weekend. What um, about the uh, Shining Fates? That is going to be February 19th, if I've got my date right. Yeah, so one of the shops I follow that's in California, Psycho Turtle, they had to stop and completely cut off their pre-order. They're like, hey, they just told us we don't know what's coming out. We don't have any. So, so, that's why this store I follow, all these collectibles, doesn't do pre-orders. Literally, one of the big things I'm seeing all these stores canceling their pre-orders now because they're trying to pre-order out this Shining Fate stuff, which it's just like what we talked about with Champion's Path. Nobody knows what they're getting until Pokemon gives it to them. So I can pre-order all I want. It doesn't mean I'm going to have the product to give to the people. Right. Well, you got to rely on a distributor. Yep. Who wants to make as much money as they can make. Absolutely. They like that secondary pricing a little bit. So, as with all our Pokemon, we will be first come, first serve the moment I open. So, February 19th, 11 a.m., come on in. I'm expecting it all to last for about two hours. Right on. Sports releases, we have Playbook Football. We're selling that for 400 bucks a box. Best price around. You remember to be on the lug box. You're just in our sports card club. You get 10% off. Just so you watch this podcast. We'll give you 10% off. We do have an open break for that. Yep. We do have yeah. a lot of spots left in there. Yep. I like the book set. It's really nice to have There's some good hits in there. Four cards per pack. Uh, all hits, you know. Three autographs, one book. Guaranteed. Beautiful. Marty, have you seen those? Which one? The, so they come in like a little playbook. Some of them fold out. Some of them are just jersey cards. But amazing Mace cards. Oh, I don't know. I might have, but I I haven't. Autograph in autograph in the in the card. So it's one card that kind of pulls out like a sweet book. Pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have any of me? Well, card technology's gotten so cool lately, dude. It's getting more and more with it. 
Yeah. All right. Well, let's just move on into Trish and Show and Tell. Trish and Show and Tell. You show, we need to talk. Yeah, I'd love to grab you. That was like the worst moment to go shoot Trish and Show and Tell. Uh, uh, Marty's wife says, don't give him something else to collect. Oh, football yeah. cards are off. Sports <laughs> cards are where it's at. So, you can never collect too many things. It's true. We got a couple of things in the store that I wanted to show off here because I think that they're pretty awesome. Um, for those of you who love Family Night, play Monopoly or with your friends, Drunk Monopoly, whatever. Uh, we got the Godzilla Monopoly in. And Ooh. pretty nice that this is pretty kick ass. Yeah, it's all about the figures that come with that game. And oh, yeah. the pieces, those things are sick. You've got Godzilla, King Ghidorah. Did I say that right? Yep, you did. Okay, Mothra, Manila, and Mecha Godzilla, and Rodan. Uh, action pieces here. Okay, Good. do you want to hold that up? How do you guys pronounce the three headed monster? So, uh, yeah, I, it's, I love how they're coming out with all sorts of different, different monopolies from just the old school. I, uh, I'd love to see what the cards look like, but I have not opened that up yet. And then we got another one in. What was that? Just, Marty had a quick question. Oh, no, I was just wondering, how did you guys pronounce the, uh, the three headed monster? Ghidorah. Ghidorah. See, I grew up always calling him Ghidra. Ghidra, too. I, you know, they've, they've called him both. I hear yeah. you call him both. I've called him both. As you say, I think Chris goes back to the like like Ghidorah and Ghidorah. Sound like a cooler Godzilla there, you say Ghidorah, right? Yeah. Like you know what you Church it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like Joe Durte. No. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so that's what we got in. Um, this yeah. takes me back to my childhood. We've got the Garbage Pail Kids Monopoly. Yeah, I used to collect these when I was a little girl. And uh, the, the, not Monopoly, but the Garbage Pail Kids. Um, so this to me is is just awesome. Like the, <laughs> the collectible action figures on here or, or uh, game pieces. You've got fish bones, overflowing garbage can, uh, zit goo tube. <laughs> you got a swirly dog poop, a guillotine, and a melting eyeball. I mean, how the awesome is that? Wicked. <laughs> it is. It's just freaking awesome. What would be your go-to piece to play this? Oh, the do for sure. The the poop. I'm gonna get the eyeball. It looks wicked. It's cool. I feel like we need to play this. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like the properties are cards. They're actually garbage scale kids. So you're training the cards, which is cool. You're That's training cool. Them yeah. So oh, yeah, wow. I had to show those off because when I, I, they've been here, um, what for a couple weeks, and uh, and I'm like, why haven't I showed these? These are freaking awesome. So yeah, they're they're available for forty or thirty nine ninety nine here at the store. So. We've got a couple of Godzillas, and that's our last garbage pail. So if you want them, come get it while it's hot. Yep. They need to do a money bags uh, garbage pail. Yes, <laughs> they do. That would that'd be, be great. That, that would be, be awesome. Money bags. Yeah. What's well, awesome is our next segment. And our last before we get into our interview with Marty, we got a couple of news things, but we do a buys of the week. And we got a cool couple pieces. We got a lot of cool buys this week, but I love wrestling. ACW coming soon, All Seas Championship Wrestling. And we've got a bunch of cool collectibles in this week for, to do with wrestling. These are the old Hasbro, maybe? Uh, I think those are the uh, LJN. I think those are the LJN ones. LJN, Thumb Wrestler, WWF. Actually, those might be the Hasbro, though, because it's under. I think they're, I'm pretty sure they're Hasbro. Yeah, I think they're Hasbro. Undertaker. The Luke Hansen, Sexy Boy, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> With the goofy look on his face. Your favorite. And then we got a cool San Francisco toy company, WCW Hulk Hogan. Let's go, brother. That's right, brother. That's cool, brother. That's it. <laughs> and then we got a cool Hot Boys Captain America from the movie, Promo Edition. That's awesome. Mr. Chris Evans there. Hot Boys are awesome toys. They did a Jack Sparrow. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Marty. And wow. It looks just like Johnny. Like, they're face accurate, you know, head to toe. This looks just like Chris Evans. It's really crazy. And we got some sweet comic books. Shazam number one. Autographed by all three people who play Shazam, including the, the kid in the new movie, the current actor, and the real first OG, Captain Marvel. That's awesome. I loved that show when I was. Was that a kid. signed at yeah, Dever Comic Con? 
Yeah. It's been sent away to two different places. Mm. TGC will take your boat travel with it. Whew. Triple sign. Big, big money spent on this. Great price all seas. 400 bucks. Then we got an awesome Sammy at number one. Neil Gaiman thing. This book's come back a lot lately. It's always been a good book, but research a lot. Nice to you. Pete Newman, copy here. Come on, check it out. And look, we haven't had it in a while. Yeah. And then we've got a Batman Ninja Turtles, number one. Signed by the great Kevin Easton with a remark where he draws a little turtle head on there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sweet. And finally, for our showcase, we got the sweet Transformer number one. Transformers. CGC grade 9.2, which is a real high grade on this book. For an action figure toy car, cartoon book. Right. Kids read it. Kids read them. They love them. High grade, sweet book. Oh, then I got this. I forgot. Aurora Bottles, Batmobile. Batman and Robin still in there. 1969. Awesome car. Again, like come on, check it out. Looks like Batman's feeling a little blue. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, you know, you we got that one division. I haven't Wanda watched Vision. it yet. Uh, I've watched it. Tonight. Yeah, one division released last night on Disney Plus. Two episodes. They're releasing first, and then they'll go week by week, like they did Mandalorian. So far, it's turned out really good. A lot of great people, or a lot of great reviews online for it. One of the top rated on Rotten Tomatoes. But it's not what you'd expect for a lot of people. It watches a lot like an old episode of Twilight Zone, or maybe an episode of The Outer Limits. First two episodes are entirely done in black and white until the very end when Wanda like makes the decision to turn everything color. Yeah. So done really well. It's super leave it to Beaver. Like feels like a family value show <laughs> until like random dark moments that it get real weird and you know something dark's going on. So leave back that you think it's her own personal hell, maybe, yeah. right? Definitely still this idea it could be in hell. It's in some kind of messed up universe. Right, cool. Awesome. Uh, big news this week's the huge sales and collectibles. Oh my god, we have Batman number one rec hit record breaker. Yep, 2.2 2. 2. 2 million dollars for Batman number one. We talked about last week that which was is the Heritage Auction, which is not the best Batman book. No, nope. Detective 27 would be the best, Batman and book. not the highest uh record. Action Comics has that right. Right. Broke, yeah, broke the record for sports cards this week. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, Mickey Mantle rookie at a 9 0 sold for 5.5. 5.2, I'm sorry. 5.2 million dollars. There's ten or four tens known to exist. So there's four Jim Mint ten man of rookies out there. Right now, Frank, obviously, that number probably doubles to triple that number of 5.2. It shattered the record by two million dollars yeah. for the Mike Trout card like two years ago. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other one that was crazy in the trading card games world, a Blastoise test card that had the Wizards of the Coast blank back, so it didn't have a Pokemon back. It's one of like six by CGC that has been found and graded. What sold? It broke the record at three hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. We know there's three others at least on the market that CGC graded, and those ones are unique because they are Blastoise with a Magic card back from the original chest print run. Wow, very cool. All right, thanks. Well, get... no, I'm sorry. Hey, Cam, we'll let you uh, kick off this interview this time. We'll let you take over a little bit. You know Marty very well, right? Well, you know, I met him. Me and Anthony met him over at. SS Park Comic Con. Right. As poorly ran, paying people, doing what they did to their guests and the people they had out there. It was an all right show. But most importantly, met Marty for the first time. He came over to Anthony. He's like, hey, can I get a picture with him? And then, and it's on Ant Power Ranger Anthony's YouTube channel. But it's Marty acting like he's punching him in the face. So he was like, should I should I punch a kid in a wheelchair? <laughs> uh, but he's an amazing guy. Him and his wife, I'm happy to call friends. Hopefully they call me friends, I guess. <laughs> they call you something. <laughs> They're like, oh, Ken's calling us again. Uh, so got, you might know him best from Pirates of the Caribbean one, two, four, and five. One, two, three, and five. Three and five. I knew I was m messing up. Scrubs, Project X, Feast two and three. Yep, two and three. Two and three. If you don't know what Feast is, it's kind of a creature monster film. 
I thought was pretty good. It's really East gorgeous. one was awesome, but I wasn't in that one. Well, you worked with uh, uh, Jay, Jason uh, Muse, right? With that it's number two, right? Uh, I think two you three, yeah. That, that was a really good scene. Yeah. And then, uh, and who else was in it? Clue Gallagher, who's an old time actor and happened to be the father of the director and the father of one of the actors in it and the grandfather of the baby that gets thrown up in the air to uh to let the feet the the beast feast upon it to, to save some guy's butt the guy's running with the baby he's like ah throw the baby up they'll get the baby and i can keep running so a lot of people are like oh that's just wrong but neither say, you've been in a lot of stuff you've been in charmed a bunch of di tv series movies uh one of my favorites that's on youtube right now is knee high pi yeah that was hilarious that was a fun one man that was that should have went the series and I, unfortunately they, they had me originally on a sunday night and then they moved it to a monday night because of whatever and whatever time slot it was on they expect they wanted to see what kind of ratings i would get and it was up against like csi the world series was on wrestling was on monday night football's on and i'm like yeah how can oh, you compete that yeah how am i going to compete on comedy central with you know the likes of that and they're like oh well it didn't get as many people to watch i'm like whatever you know put me on a different night and see what you know when there's you know nothing else going on but they didn't and it's comedy central's fault and I wish I could get it back from him because I know the writer who wrote it uh, has a lot of ideas to, you know, could kick it going. And he had a lot of other ideas of other episodes that could have been. But, you know, I would have watched it. over there is gone. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we got a first quick question, it looks like, from Marshall McNeil. Marty, have you been approached by Disney or any Star Wars work, past or present? Uh, in the past, I've done uh, some. Um, some stuff that I don't know if it's ever made in the films because I haven't seen anything since. Um, I mean, I was a fan of four, five, and six, and then when one, two, and three came out, I kind of was like, Ugh. "Yeah, I, I just, that. It, it, that just wasn't my thing." But I've done some stuff that they've sh done some reshoot stuff, but again, I don't know if, if any of it was ever used um, in the actual final product uh, once it came out. So. Because it was just kind of like alternate, you know, shooting uh, stunt stuff. So I, I couldn't tell you if, if any of my stuff's made it in there. But, you know, I'd love to. But I think Warwick, a good buddy of mine, Warwick Davis, has pretty much got that on. Um, you know, he's pretty much the man when it comes to anything Lucas there. So. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long, long time. But he's been in yeah. my how do you feel about Warwick? Is he like a he's a mentor? I mean, he's he's such a good actor, dude, and you know, phenomenal in the collectibles industry from Willow to the Leprechaun, one of my favorite horror movies of mm -hmm. all time. Well, you yeah. know, he's got a TV Disney and him uh there's gonna be a Willow TV series coming out. Yeah. Nice. So um I look forward to seeing that because I love that. He was we're the same age and um I've done stunts for him when he did Leprechaun. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah, dude. I've done his stunts and stuff, but he also is my uh, kind of like my agent over in England. You know, he can represent me over there. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if he can get me on the the TV show, cool. If he can't, you know, I don't know. Disney might be like, oh, let's just hire local, you know, Yahoo's to keep it cheaper and. Yeah, yeah, it seems it's kind of like Disney's win a little bit lately, especially yeah. the Star Wars movies, the new ones. There's so yeah. many British people in it. I don't know if that's is that cost saving, probably. That's it. That's all yeah. it is. That's what I assumed it always was, really. You know? well, that's what they do with like Power Rangers because they film in New Zealand. Right. And right. they're supposed to be filmed now because they're COVID free. The they opened up their entire island, basically. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, so they came out 
a month ago saying that they were COVID. I don't know if Power Rangers is filming, but they're slated to be coming out in fall. I know so, something's going on down there because a buddy of mine is, uh, is a, he's not as little as me, but um, he's actually Danny DeVito's stunt double. And I don't know if it's anything has to do with Danny DeVito, but he's down in um, uh, New Zealand. He didn't tell me what whatever it is that he's working on, but it was supposed to be till June. So I'm like, I was kind of like, oh, well, but he wouldn't leak out and tell me what it was, you know, because it's, it's a competition thing. Nobody wants to tell anybody what's going on because they're, you know, they don't want to. Like, I just got that job. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, Competition is real, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It totally is. Well, you, yeah, it's a niche market, especially, you know, your expertise, right? I mean, so I'm it sure is. it's cut through. Like anything, right? And yeah. now, you already brought it up, but not only an actor, you're a stunt actor. Stuntman, yeah. What kind of, what was the biggest stunt you did? Uh, probably the, the deadliest one. Um, there's a scene in Pirates 3 where I come up out of a floor, a broken floor with a big gun and then I shoot it and it, it it blows me way back and um I was on a I was on a ratchet for that and we had to we had to time that and we only did it two takes but I had to make my mark when I hit the top of the the ramp up onto the floor in the in the bathhouse because if I would have been ahead of it or behind it when that ratchet went um I would have went backwards right into the, the edge of the floor that was still there yeah. instead of downwards and it would have took my head off. Ooh. So we got it in two takes and that was like, Gore was happy and we're like, okay, that's good. We'll leave that alone. And you know, that's one of the scariest ones and driving a car into the pool on project X. Project X yeah. I mean, that's, you got other stunt guys, you know, trying to cross in front of the vehicle when the coordinator says, okay, we, you need to hit not 88.1 gigawatts, gigawatts or whatever, but it was like a third, you know, like 30 miles an hour or 15, whatever it was I needed to hit to, in order to launch the car perfectly. So we would only make it so far across the pool and, you know, you do what you're told. And then uh, stunt guys were, were just just innate in us to always try to get more and to be the, the last guy and uh, and you know the car did clip one of the guys going across and kind of flipped him up over the hood he was all right but it, it was his own fault because he should have been cleared you know of the front of the car anyway you know and i've got enough worried about with all the you know background actors that are supposed to be staying staying put and staying aside and um luckily when the car went into the pool it, it actually made it all the way across. And one of the stunt guys that was in the pool, luckily was in the corner because the way the front of the car came in, it, um, and it went towards that corner. If you wouldn't have been in that little alcove in the corner, uh, you know, the front of the car would have, would have squished him. But because the, you know, both ends of the front end of the car stopped it and left a, an area in the front where he could, you know, not be hit. That was scary too. So because you're that good. Yeah, right. I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> that damn. Good. Well, they practice everything so much. I, I thought that dang Bronco guy was just feeding, uh, giving that guy a drink of water for a second. I was like, oh wow, that thing moves. But it was just him. <laughs> oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> he moves. He rocks and rolls. But we can't play it the old song. Yeah, we can't play it the copyright. Yeah. Uh, that's about all I can do. He's a problem. What else can he do? There, the there are going nowhere. on our stuff. I bet. I'm sure there is. So, Martin, did you bring any uh, collectibles this time? Show. Sure. I know you're a big time collector. We got into it last time a little bit. But you know, yeah, I think people like to see uh, actors and uh, celebrities in the same world that we you know. Us, us, us normal folk are around, right? Can you see what's going on behind me? I'm actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually packing because uh, the wife wants to move back to Tennessee 
Yeah, that's what you were saying. So, yeah, today's my day to start taking down all my football helmets and, uh, you know, all my autographed baseballs and helmets and stuff. And, um, I mean, this will go away in a little bit. That's that's me and Kevin. I've been trying um, to find this. This is awesome. Yeah. You can find them on eBay easy, but Kevin actually signed it to me. So, uh, you know, to my pal Marty or whatever. But even though it's mine, it's mine to keep. But it's it's signed by Kevin. Now you got some of your comics that came in. I yeah, got to send to you. We got. We oh, you do? Them. We're gonna save them for you every time we get them in. They're pretty tough to find. Oddly, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'd be happy to sign them and get them, get anything else signed and send them some back as long as I can keep a copy of myself. Oh yeah, yeah. We're absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, if you're not moving or you're already moved. We have our show in May, and stuff might become normal. We might have you out here. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, we're, we're uh, hey, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle's all right. I mean, I'm <laughs> doing the whole COVID, you know, lock, I've been on lockdown for God, almost a year now. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I had to turn down Comic Cons, which is great. I mean, they ended up folding anyway, because who's going to go to Comic Cons? Right. You know, How do you but, feel about that going forward? How do you feel about that going forward? Are, are are there any coming or starting up again or no? Yeah. Well, if it happened, let's say we get everybody gets the vaccine, perfect world, Comic Con yeah. happen again. How do you feel about going and signing? Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm fine. I mean, cool. Either I get vaccinated myself or I wear a mask and you come up. Obviously, I don't I don't want to shake hands. I'll elbow right. or you know whatever and. But sign the picture as long as you're on the other side of the table. I don't. Yeah. Then wash you know. your hands, right? Yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah. I just, I'm curious. I wonder how many, how many people won't do them anymore and how many people will. It's got, that's a real, real threat to the industry going forward, you know? Do yeah, people well, want to go? Well, the, the funny thing is, I've, I've said, like, it, it seems that people don't go there anymore to meet actors and, um, to get autographs, it's it's more about uh, going and getting dressed up and uh, let me take my picture with ten slave layers and yeah, they're not thinking about comic books. I know that. No, they yeah, it's all about cosplay now. Yeah, they don't care what what what's unless it's uh, William Shatner who doesn't need the money. <laughs> you know, it's like I see him all the time too, Adam. It's it's weird. He's it's like they got five. Mm-hmm. Hundred million dollars to do the, the what do you call it campaign, and then I, I I saw him once and I was like hey you know hey a buddy of mine a friend of mine uh uh this girl she was on with um Boston Legal a little person Meredith and I was like oh yeah we're you know really you you worked with a really good friend of mine blah 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 and I'm hey can I get a get, get a picture signed and and then he charged me I'm like oh really oh. So here's a funny story. Last year at Springs Comic Con, he started signing James Kirk. Or no, he signed not James Kirk, James Shatner. He had uh-huh. a James D. Kirk, William Shatner. He's trying somebody had to get redone. So he put James he Shatner. The wrong name. And then you got what what's that lady thing that was on uh Lost in Space? Uh she was the mother. Of which show? Uh Lost in Space. Oh, Chris, you should know this. I should know this, but I Bill Mummy, because Bill Mummy's in Lost in Space, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a little kid, right? It yeah. Was, uh, but, but anyway, whatever her name is. Yeah. If you came to her and you had all the other autographs already on a, a past photo, she'd charge you like two or three times more than she normally charges, and uh, and and you'd be like, well, "Wait, your price is this?" She goes. Yeah, but you need mine to complete it. And so she basically has you over a barrel. So it's like you go to her and get it signed first and then get everybody else. <laughs> that because, one is you know, June like, Lockhart. June Lockhart, that's yeah, it. Yeah, June Lockhart, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm just I like... Got you know, AJ's quicker on the phone than I am. She's an old pro ethics uh, con scene, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like 20, 25 years ago. Classic, going back to Starfest. Yeah, back, exactly. Her Bill Mummy, too. Mm-hmm. That Bill Mummy. Adam Westbert, all those guys. Used to be at all those things. 
<laughs> and I talked to the owners of Colorado Springs Con. They still are planning to have their con. It's uh, August 27th through the 20th, or yeah, 27th through the 29th. And it's going to be down in the Springs. And we're going to have our show in the end of May. Yep. Where's that at? Their show, I don't think, has a location because the location they were at was torn down. Ours is we're going to be at a, it's, what is it? The Double Tree now. 6900 Tire Road. It's right by the airport. It's right by yeah, the airport. Yeah, yeah. In Denver? Yes. yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Easy, easy. It would be great to go to that. It would be nice to go to that one. But I just, I feel like it's the most humbling. Like, you really, really realize you're nobody when you go there and, and like, nobody comes over to your table. It's like. Man, you know, okay. Well, I always wonder right. about that. Like I, I, you know, especially at Springs, they have a lot of guys. Uh, they had somebody from Drake and Josh there, and Jay went and got his autograph. <laughs> but he's like the nerdy character on Drake and Josh. He's like a, you know, a side character there, on that show. There are actors okay. these things that nobody knows. Cause they're yeah, and they're sitting there, and they, there, and you they know? just sit there, and then they're like, they'll get up and go, "Hey, can I sell you like five of these so I can get money to go?" Yeah. Um, yeah, Robert Axelrod was yeah. like that. He, uh, Robert Axelrod was Lord Zed on Power Rangers and has had no line. I'm like, huh. and he's now since passed, but that was one of the ones that me and Anthony wanted to get for his photograph that he had that we had commissioned, and we were excited. So, he, like, I mean, he was. You only need to hear two words to get excited Power Rangers. And if you're happy, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. You're in Power Rangers, yes. Martin Kleba. I get excited about that. There we go. Yeah. 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 Hey, Marty, there is a, a question. There is a question for Marty. We yeah, we do. We have a question. Marty. Marty. We start with uh, Marshall wants to know what's the highest jump you've ever done? Highest jump? Probably uh, with the car. Car. All, car. Or stunt. You jump yeah. out. Oh, just the one. The only, I've only done two car stunts ever. And it was one in the pool. And then um, I double these triplets on a really bad show called um uh baby geniuses too i love it <laughs> and it was with uh but this is when i became friends with scott bayo and um john boy and the weird thing was we were filming in vancouver on um uh december 11 you know 9 11. And so we were stuck up there and seeing all the planes come in that were being rerouted out, you know, couldn't go to Seattle. They were being rerouted into Vancouver and stuff because of the terrorist stuff and everything. But, uh, and I'm still great friends with Scott to this day, but uh, it was a, you know, it was a sequel and uh, I got to drive a, a van as one of the kids and do a little, um, you know, sideways stuff, but never as far as, far as jump. You know, the only time I ever jumped the car was uh, in uh, Project X. So yeah, cool. we got one from Gregor. Listen, oh, Marty, what's the best TV set you have been on that wasn't a recurring role? That wasn't, that was not a recurring role? Right. What your favorite guest spot? So what, it wouldn't be Scrubs, right? Okay. Um, Scrubs a great show. Loved it. Yeah, I love Scrubs too. That's a good show. Are they, doing a, are they coming back out with it? Really? They did one where some of the doctors were still working in the hospital. No, no, no. That was right after. That was like after eight. They did yeah, that was just nine. But I, I want to say last week I heard they were doing a reboot. I have heard back. something like this too. I don't know how far along it is, but I've heard they're in talks to start a new Scrubs series. Very nice. I watched it. At least in the beginning. Sure. See how it goes. The original hospital that, that we shot that in, though, uh, is tore down. It's now a big, huge, like expensive condominium complex. Of course. Because uh, it's right across the street from my real doctor's office. But, um, wow, best, oh, God. Uh, How about this? How cool is Universal Studios, like the backside of the lot where the actors go? Like I was going universal to the little two area on the bus, you know. Yeah, you know I what? Always to be on your side of that. Just you know, that was my first job in California when I moved here. Um, I, I didn't know what I was. I was coming out here to obviously get in the business, 
and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I just, mm -hmm. I had worked on Broadway for 10 years. I had enough money to try to make a go over here. And, but my first job was as Elvin of the Chipmunks, not as a, uh, like one of the guys that walks around the park, takes pictures, but it was an actual, like, we did six shows a day, little musical thing. You didn't hear us speak, but <laughs> it was through a soundtrack where we met, we, um, did like what a musical number. Yeah. Um, let me see. 2000. 2000. Awesome. Yeah. yeah it's talking to the movies, the newer movies. Yeah, it was Alvin and the Chipmunks meets uh, Frankenstein. So, <laughs> but we did it six, and man, I was never cut like I was then because it's hot and you're sweating, you're in a tunic and those big old plastic heads, and you're just like. <laughs> That's gotta be. But that was my I first time. Was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of. So yeah, I, I mean, I like Universal. Like, um, uh, kind of got a, got into it a little bit with the. Like the supervisor of our group, um, because he's, you know, he had his panties up in a bunch, and I'm like, here, I, I'm a guy who came from like Broadway. I'm used to union stuff, and they're. And the funny thing is, I was one of the ones that helped bring the union to uh, Universal Studios, because really? I'm like, yeah, I'm like this is a American Guild. This is like a. These are like Agva shows. And the only guys that were union were the stunt performers on um, Waterworld, and they had another show back then called the old, like the old Waterworld. Show. Yeah, I was there three years ago, and they still have that Waterworld show going. Oh, it's that's the best thing there. It is cool, but my God, that movie's old, dude. That's they're still trying. They to pay for it. And it's the best, the best it's attraction there, really. They're still trying to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. The movie. They're like, hey, uh, I love Waterworld too. Show. It is a cool stunt show. It's funny because whenever I go there. I know most of the stunt guys, and if they see me, they'll go out of way to like hit me with the water or yeah, yeah. you know splash the somehow water from the boat or one of the jet skis up onto me, and or they'll say my name like, "Hey, there's Gordy." It's like, <laughs> oh god, you know. Yeah, right. I bet I can only imagine. <laughs> but I don't know. We got another question, Kim. Yeah. Oh, Marshall wants to know. What's your favorite comic then and now? Okay. In the eighties, I used to collect uh, Frank. Frank Miller. Frank Miller's yeah, the Frank Miller, the the Dark Knight. Oh the, yeah, yeah. The, run. the four graphic novels. Yeah, one of the best comics ever written. Yeah, that was great. And then, um, but I was always a Spider Man guy. Like I. To me, it was, you know, all about Peter Parker. And I guess when the, the movie started coming out, I was a little bummed in the beginning because they did it butt backwards with Mary Jane. And it's like, no, Gwen Stacy's first. Yeah, they missed you know? that. And I mean, now we're on like, what, upteenth version of some Spider Man dude. And, uh, you know, well, that was African American. And, do this whole multiverse Spider Verse thing now. Yeah, and that, but I always my favorite would have to be Spider Man. I just think his ultimately strength, agility, speed, everything. He won up or is equal to so, somebody else. I mean, if he went up against Superman, Superman's the strongest, right? But Spider Man's. Um, equally strong in other things that that superman's not you know or batman batman's just a man with a bunch of cool gadgets he's right. not necessarily oh, a, a superpower he's he's a said, yeah. he superpower. said in just a movie. <clears throat> right rich. so in the wolver i mean actually my one of my other favorite graphic novel i still have is uh wolverine and spider-man were both i want to say over in russia for some reason and they don't get along, right? They didn't at one point, but in the end, they're in a they're in a, a grave uh, graveyard, and they're fighting. And I think uh, Spider Man's on top, and he's got his hand on um, Wol around Wolverine's throat, and Wolverine's underneath them, but he has his fist underneath Spider Man's chest, and it's a it's a uh, what do you call it? 
a draw because whoever does whatever, they're both dead. Because if you squeeze, he's going to squeeze in, you know, the blades are going to come out, you're dead. Or, you know, his strength in his hand could snap Wolverine's neck. So it's kind of like a draw. It's like, okay, we walk away, just let it go. Here we go. But I don't know. That's, yeah. Ultimate chicken. But Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight stuff was pretty kick ass. Oh, he's a great series. Classic. I love Frank Miller. Sin City was great too. 300. 300. 300 is. Robocop. He also wrote Robocop 2. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he's in it. Well, I just. Robocop 2 in Detroit? Yeah, he wrote that one. Okay. Both of them are in Detroit. All the Robocops are good, right? But, yeah. Oh, it's out there for all our viewers. There is Marty's cameo. If you ever want him to, like, do a shout out, happy birthday. If he wants to do an F you to someone, he'll do it all. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put it in. I like those the best. Hey, I'll tell anybody to. I'll do yeah. that for the charge. Yeah, Marty, Harris, anything you want to promote, anything you're doing, working on, anything you want any of these guys to check out? Well, you know, my my uh, my wife and I, we sell a lot. Well, I should say my wife. She kicks butt, but um, as Kenneth knows, uh, we're, we're involved in um, the paparazzi jewelry, and hers is uh, moviestarbling.com. Nice. And then, so we, we we're raising we're raising money, you know, to keep our daughter going into gymnastics stuff. But also, it looks like now we're gonna really have to do what we can to uh, you know, because I haven't worked in a while and. She's still teaching, so she's teaching and trying to sell the stuff. But any luck, anything we can make to uh, to help facilitate our move, um, you know, back to Tennessee, we need to do everything we can to save. And you know, I I crashed my motorcycle, so my uh, my hospital bills went up to like I can't I can't believe it. Just riding my motorcycle a mile away from the house. Hit a tree doing 30, totaled the bike, which I could fix for like 10 grand. But my hospital bills, get this for four days in ICU. How much do you think it was? Oh, about $250,000. Wow. This is a scam, dude. So, I, I literally just. The motorcycle. So, the Johnny Depp Pirates motorcycle? We saw the first episode. <laughs> The only thing that survived was the gas tank. Cool. Like that. that still has Johnny's autograph on it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's pristine. So I could sell the gas tank to if somebody wanted to buy it for their motorcycle or to make a lamp out of it or whatever. <laughs> it's right. Nobody else in the world would have, would have a gas tank. I that sure one. Well, there's a lot yeah. of giant cans out there. Help out Marty with the hospital. We need to try like a GoFundMe with the, the gas can or something. Yeah. Uh, do a 30 day auction? Yeah. That's an idea. Something like that, yeah. Right? It have to be worth a lot. We'd have to be, you know, five million. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like that Mickey Mantle rookie, exactly. Yeah. All right. Any of our questions for Marty? Here's your chance, people. Let's see. This bad boy out. Hey, I got a question. I have I have two baseball cards yes. uh, that are Bo Jackson's, and one of them is the correct one. It has Bo Jackson on the front, and on the back it has his stats. And the other one is the exact same thing on the front, but on the back it's somebody else's uh, name and stats. So the whole back wrong? Yeah. So the, the cards are printed on two sheets, so when they put them together they get screwed up sometimes? They'll put yeah. the wrong backs on the wrong front. Yeah. So it'd be an error card. It's kind of like an anomaly. In sports cards, unless it's an error they made on purpose, basically, is to make it collectible, uh, they're not worth a bunch. But so it's not worth that much. Just Email me that, though, Marty, so I know for sure what you're talking about. Send me yeah. a picture of that if you can. All right, I will. All right. I'll tell you for sure. All right, Ken. Any con news, my friend, or anything else? Anything con else? news is Carl Springs Con is. Still planning to go forward. Yeah. Uh, some of the big news for San Diego Comic Con is that they're not selling any ticket. They're they're planning on having it. Good. But they're not selling any 
additional tickets because they're going to honor all last year's ticket holders and badge holders. Yeah. Those will be the only people allowed to actually go. Right. So they keep the distancing right. Yeah. That's so, all it's going to have to be. It's going to be. As long as they don't try to go to this virtual, like I did one or two last year virtually, and it's like, yeah, uh, how am I going to make any money virtually? Like, <laughs> right, you got to get up and sing and dance and put on a show or something, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, but, San Diego Comic Con can do it. That convention center is so big, it's literally a mile long. Um, I, yeah, well, I don't do that one, I've done it twice, okay. and literally, when they say 400,000 people, right. It is four hundred thousand people. Yep. You, I stayed in the hotel across the street, and I woke up in the morning. And I looked, and it was literally two miles down the, the road, and the people were ten people thick to get in. And once you got in there, it was like, you know, and let's be honest, they not everybody has great hygiene. So right. especially if you're at my level. And you know, <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. That sucks, Marty. That's true, dude. It's like oh, sweat. And just oh, like sweaty mess packs everywhere. Oh. And the worst thing is, you got the most of those people. They go there for like all the Todd McFarlane, uh, like action figures. So they'll grab like ten of them. It's yeah. like take one. You don't need to take yeah. ten so you can go and sell them on eBay. And it's like you know, I don't know all these guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel like we've been talking about them all week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't get one, but they fill up a truck. Yeah, so it's kind of psychosis of some sort on that. I don't know. Put, say, put my number, put my name out there for the Denver one. I'd love to be there. Yeah, bro. Well, that's that's awesome. one. In Colorado Springs, we can get you in the Colorado Springs. Can get yeah, there. yeah. Everybody always says yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> I right, can't. Right. <laughs> Even well, if you're not. Yeah. They'll hang up and they'll be like, yeah, forget her. She is. You can hang out with us nerds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong hanging out with us nerds. We're fun. We'll call hang out and with... do a virtual from, from the, the con. Yeah. Hey, hey. People <laughs> walking by. <laughs> Uh, the power oh, range is all over that. Jason, David, Frank, and these guys. Are Some of those guys are really cool. Virtual every day. Yeah, our guys love you and Scrubs. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Got, got a lot of good. I love, I love you, Marty's there. out there. Love you, love you Marty. Love John Scrubs. Thank you, guys. Question for everybody: How would you guys want Martin Pleba out here for 2021 All Seas Fan Expo? What do you guys think? I like to do this intro signing. Whatever you I want to come, Marty. Else yeah, we can have you in the store and do a signing. You know, whatever, brother. I got your airfare. I got you a hotel for you and your wife. Whenever you want to come. Okay. All right. You know. Well, how about when they're driving the truck cross country? Either way. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, you, want me go, you want me to go that way? That's the hard way up through the mountains when you're doing like uh, 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 yeah. up the hill. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, bro. Uh, so, like I said, our Fan Expo is going to be the end of May. Uh, that's probably going to be one of the first events of the year. People getting their vaccinations. One of our customers here, Dan Flanagan, he just had his second round of getting his. And now they're starting to vaccinate some of the elderly. So I see the end of May, beginning of June, June yeah. when we can have all season Fan Expo, ACW events, and just have a good time. When is it in the, at the end of May? Have we set a date? No, I haven't set a date. So it'll probably be June, I'm thinking. Uh, it, it sounded more like June in Colorado where we're going to have uh, groups oh, of... That, that'd be great because I know my... I, I'm, we just um, found my uh, my older sister that we never... We knew we, she was out there, but we just... Uh, unfortunately, my dad passed away before we ever found her, but she oh. found us and... Um, so now we're trying to, you know, my sisters have already been with her three times, but I still haven't. But one of her kids is getting married at the end of May, May 29th. So I'm, I'm thinking of, um, it, you know, since I haven't got to see her yet, is showing up for the wedding because my my uh, my sisters are going to go down there and my son. So why not go to the wedding? And yeah, yeah. Gonna, you know, yeah, it would be great if it was June. There's plenty to do in color for Colorado, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, 
We'll work around that date, close to the You know what I mean? We'll make yeah, because we got like June fifth, right. June fifth, sixth, something like that. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. So, man. We got this. All right. All right. Sounds awesome, guys. Hey, Marty. Thanks, Thank you, Marty. Brother. Be safe. Love Peace you, brother. Man. And don't forget. Thank you everybody for watching, like and following. Thank Bye you, Marty. Good night, everybody. Peace Bye. out.